Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and this is another StarCraft 2 England cast. Now guys, today I've got game 2 of a best of 3, it is from the Russian StarCraft League and it is between the beast, the mighty, the incredible Star Tales bomber, the orange Terran player in the lower right and he is up against the ferocious, the fierce Millennium Feast in the top left as the red Protoss player. Now, did I did I say Bomber, the, the orange Protoss? I meant the orange Terran if I said Protoss. My brain might be going a bit skew with after the awesomeness that was game one. It was just so good. It was brilliant. If you haven't watched it, pause this video, flick over to my channel and find it because my oh my, it was so good, guys. Like, seriously, brilliant. So, do watch it and it was absolutely great. Now, obviously the map for game two, Ahana, I like this map. This map is good because You've got a narrow choke to your natural. You can take that very, very comfortably. You've got a nice, easy progression to your third. The rocks are there, yes, but you can knock them out quite quickly. And um, you can then completely wall off here. You can defend this area. It's all nice. Your fourth and fifth base are quite comfortable. And then you've got these two nice tack paths either side. The watchtowers give you good vision of everything that you could need. You've got room for drops to come up. You've got some interesting blink play. You can get it with a blink observer as well. So we'll wait and see what these two players have in store. Now, spoiler alert, game one obviously did go to feast. He, he engaged very well throughout. And Bomber did go for something a bit tricky. He went for that Hellion with meta backdrop play to start off with didn't really work it got scouted he then tried to transition into banshees again didn't really work um bomber then just got on the back foot from that point really and then things got worse when he lost pretty much all of his scvs to a relentless attack out of feast with what was essentially just a couple of colossi and an awful lot of gateway units now we do have at the moment a probe in the base now you don't really want probes in the base because that probe can now see hey you've not got any gas which means guess what i have not got to worry about headings i've not got to worry about banshees i've not got to worry about marauders i've not got to worry about stim yet or any of those things so that's all pretty good what i do have to worry about though as a protoss in this situation is well there could be a lot of marines there could also be an expansion coming out quickly. Those are the two things that will be running through my head when I see no gas. Now, on the other hand, we'll see here that Feast, he's getting up his second gas already. He's getting his cybernetics core up. So, I'll be thinking, hey, what's going on? Now, we do have a second barracks here by Bomber. Just a little out the way. A third barracks as well. So, we're not going to be seeing an expansion. We're going to be seeing a lot of Marines. We could also see a bunker come down. A bunker container is very probable. And obviously the bunker will just help those marines be even more cost effective. Now guys, while these two players are waiting to display what they're going to do, let me say if you like any of my casts, then please do subscribe because I get new games up every single day of the week, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, unless of course something disastrous happens, which has been known, or if I'm at a live event. But 9 times out of 10, there will be a cast up daily. So subscribe, leave a cool comment below, and obviously like the video, that would be amazing. And I love getting all seeing all the support, seeing all the discussions and things like that about the games and I will reply to as many people as I can. Now, anyway, we do have of course this bunker up, so Bomber taking a more defensive position right now. Um, so far not looking to expand, no expansion on its way out, but the, the setup looks like it's faking it and that could actually be quite a distraction for Feast because if you see this bunker here, you see the defensive position, the setup, this screams I've got a base building here. The fact there isn't a base building there really could mean problems because that means a push could be coming. Now that stalker does see the marines! Oh my god, that is such brilliant play right now because obviously now Feast is aware of what could be coming up. He's going to be ready to cancel that base. He's getting two more gateways at a pretty sensible time anyway, to be honest. I mean, you'd look to get up to three gates about then. Now that stalker is desperately trying to run away. We've got more units coming. We've got two SCVs being pulled, which makes me think we're going to see some bunker play. We do have the command center now in production though for Bomber. So doing the right thing, putting on some aggression and expanding behind it. That is a fundamental principle of StarCraft that I want everyone watching to really understand you put pressure on and you expand behind because the pressure means they're defending not attacking you generally speaking now of course see these marines do need to be careful guarding shield up that reduces the dps of the marines massively but well the stalkers alone they can out micro the marines the single scb soaking up some of the fire but only four marines left there now some reinforcements are finally coming in but if that bunker finishes it could be some tough times a lot of probes just coming down here to try and soak up the fire and it looks like Feast is defending this incredibly easily. Actually almost like disappointingly so for Bomber, where 
that seemed to do pretty much nothing. I mean, did he get any kills? He killed, what, two SCVs? Which really is nothing. And he's... Uh, two, two probes, rather. And he's already, well, quite a way behind. Six workers behind. He's, well, only just leveled up the base cam. That's not an orbital command yet. So that is another large period of time. We do have double forges coming out and the robotic facility from face he's playing this absolutely superbly if i do say so myself he's getting his third and fourth gas up i expect we probably will see colossus yet again out of feast because he's just in a comfortable spot the double upgrades as well i think is a great move because you know you're ahead really capitalize on that for the mid game and show what you can do so for the moment i'd say bomb is in trouble now yet again his early aggression didn't pay off feast defended in both game one and two all of that early aggression, two very different types of early aggression with extreme simplicity and taking very few losses, specifically very few worker losses, which means that in the mid game Bomber really does have some catching up to do. I mean, as you can see here, Bomber is 10 workers behind. Yes, you can factor in mules and see that actually they're pretty similar in terms of their income, but the gas income, a lot lower for Bomber because he doesn't have his third and fourth gas, and regardless of that, mineral income is still the same. So that gas is obviously allowing the teching we're seeing from Feast here, getting that robotics bay up. We will see Colossus. We've got the Observer on the way. The 1-1 one, one upgrades coming down. No Chrono Boosts on them. Interestingly, though, um, and literally as I say that, the Chrono Boosts go down. So, again, this is going to be a nice timing push. I reckon it could be yet again with just the one Colossus. That is very likely, in my opinion. Extended Thermal Lance will be down again to deal with the bunkers, and, well, there's a starport, there's also the factory coming down, the factory really just there to power add-ons most likely, trying to get quite a few medevacs up for that marine world and medevac composition that most Terran players aim for in Terran versus Protoss matchups. So, anyway, we do have the robotics bay down now, we should see a Colossus start at any second, we've got more gateways being added to this force, I'll take the gateway count actually to five, so, no, six. I can't count, I missed this one, that hidden gateway, the naughty hidden gateway. Anyway, down here, I did see something. Where is it? There we go, we do have the observer on its way across now. Obviously, that is just scouting everything out. We'll see the plus one Terran infantry weapons. And, well, here we go, we've got charge coming down for those zealots. Exactly what you want to be doing, that allows them to close off the distance. A reaper on its way out, that again... Not quite sure what's hoping to be done with that reaper at the moment. Perhaps just coming up here to poke and prod in behind, and, well... For the moment, this is all pretty standard. The 2-2 upgrades coming out as well here for Feast. So Feast is going to get such an economical advantage. He's getting his third base, though, Bomber. So that will put him a base up. Obviously, the additional mule will help massively. Will allow him to catch up in terms of the SCV count. But still, the tech advantage is so definitely there for Feast. And I don't even think that... A st where is the starboard? The starboard is there, but currently only making medevacs, and not actually making anything at all at the moment, but a big push on its way, ready to come over here right now for Bomber, and the Templar Archive is on the way out as well for Feast, so he's clearly gearing up to get everything that he could potentially need, but he does have the one Colossus, that's a good choice, a one Colossus with a couple of High Templar, with Storm, and surprisingly effective, because... We see the storm deals that real burst damage, and then just one wave from the Colossus, Thermal Lance just vaporizes all of the infantry, specifically the Marines, and that means that a lot of the Terran's damage output is stunted and can't really do much. And I'd say Bomber, he's moving his army around an awful lot, but it's doing a lot of nothing right now, in the simple term. Feast, he's, he's still in a good spot in terms of getting the work count up and keeping it high. He's taking down these rocks, that's suggesting that he's going to be taking that third base relatively quickly. And well, the scan goes off, picks off an observer, but at the moment both these players are actually pretty passive. Storm on the way out, but if I had to call it either way at the moment, I would still say the Feast is slightly ahead. The Ghosts are on their way out, ready to deal with those High Templar though. So, which way do you call it? It's it's pretty even now, and that is really the way I like it, because obviously you've got Bomber with that extra base, and he is catching up in the work account. He's getting three workers at a time, obviously. That does help. He's only, what, three workers behind now? When you factor mules in, that should put him economically ahead, and of course, he's getting up that fifth and sixth gas, which really can't be overstated how important they are in allowing Bomber to get real tech-heavy units. Now, in terms of upgrades, getting up that ghost mobius reactor he's getting the plus one terran infantry armor also getting the armory out for the two two upgrades but three three already on the way out for feast so he does have quite a heavy 
upgrade advantage. I mean, he's got 2-2 finish, that's compared to what will be 1-1, one, one, and that's where Protoss really start dominating if they have an upgrade advantage, because their units are powerful anyway, and if the upgrade advantage is there, they just become absolutely traumatizing. Now, the third base nearly finished up here right now for Feast. That's always a dangerous spot, because a three base Protoss can really do anything they want to. A War Prism coming down. Nice addition, I must say, because any push that comes down, obviously you can use the power from the War Prism to warp in more units, which, again, is just going to help the push continue the momentum. And if you recall back to Game 1, that is really where we saw Feast dominate Bomber by just constant reinforcements, constant pressure, no rest, no let up from the constant basically battering down of his front door and that basically meant the bomber finally left lost the game just because of the amount of pressure he was under so it'll be interesting to see if that happens again a lot of high templar are, are now i mean there are the four there those four storms are just gonna be so powerful could absolutely wreck this the four swords need to be bang on the money though and for the moment it looks like bomber is going in full retreat that storm really doing a good amount of damage no more storms as of yet the colossus is able to do heavy fire no vikings on the field so that colossus is just dealing big damage at the moment some archons are morphing in there were a couple of feedback somewhere i thought i heard but it may have just been an emp down but obviously the high templar they get taken out bomber didn't come out too badly from that in my opinion um he did lose more stuff but he also took out the High Templar, so no more storms to deal with, but the Archons are there, that's going to be a threat to him, more ghosts on the way out, but without the Vikings, he's going to struggle to deal with just a single Colossus. Now, a High Templar coming from the side will get scouted, those storms, because it's going to die anyway, so why not? That will use some medevac energy, but here we do see the Vikings coming in from the side, and... That is a bit of a waste of the Vikings in my opinion because they just got instantly vaporized. We do have a couple of Marauders going to their death as well. Bit of bad control. And I know it might seem mean saying that's bad control, but you can't afford at this level of play to lose units for nothing now. We do have a handful of Zealots charging their way in. The main force needs to be careful not to pull back though because that will give the map dominance over to Feast who can just walk forward and do whatever he wants. Zealots will get cleaned up, but Feast not actually taking his opportunity to just march on in. Three High Templar are warping. We do have a single Colossus getting produced as well. That will bring us up to two of those. Meanwhile, a Bomber's side will... He is trying to get out with some more Vikings rapidly. He does have that Ghost Academy not doing anything and really just a lot of infantry. He's, his, well, medevac numbers aren't huge. He's only at seven medevacs. Could possibly a bit more. Bomber, he's, he's about 40 supply off max compared to the 20 supply off max of Feast. The work account, 68 to 51. So Feast ahead in terms of work account. That Archon needs to be careful. The concussive shells will be effective. Obviously, Snipe will still be effective as well. That Storm does some damage. Not that huge because obviously Bomber was already retreating, but again, it's just soaking up that medevac energy. But medevacs seem to have what is a near infinite supply of energy, so still going pretty well. We do have just a single Marina Marauder running up. That's going to be irritating because they can get some kills, and you really have to send some units back to deal with that. But here we go. We do have some Vikings in there already. A storm goes off the. Well, the Vikings do get a kill on a single Colossus, but they do get taken down. The second Colossus is there, and well. Some good damage being done, but still neither of these players are able to finish the other one off. Um, it does look like Feast is starting to struggle slightly. Much more of his army composition is becoming Zealots, which isn't necessarily ideal. A fourth base on its way out for Feast, though. Even under this real, real heavy pressure, he's still expanding. He's picking off the rocks as well, transferring the probes. But that could open a good attack angle up for Feast. That Colossus needs to be careful. The second one joining in. It is spread out, which is surprisingly actually helping in some weird way. Probes even getting in on the fight right now. That's soaking up some damage. And there's the GG from Bomber, who, with one bad engagement, goes from looking to be in a good spot to being absolutely out. So that means Feast does take this series 2-0. And that is quite surprising. I thought Bomber was actually going to take game two and we would have seen a third game of the series. But a bit of a shame. Anyway, guys, if you did enjoy this cast, please subscribe, like the video, and leave a cool comment. That would be amazing. Also, send me a tweet or follow me on Twitter. Let me know what you think of my casting and all that sort of thing. That would be great. And, of course, that is on screen now. But anyway, guys, if you do like my videos, then there are loads more on my channel. So watch them. And if you're up to date, then I will see you tomorrow for my next cast. And on that note, thank you very much for watching. I am Maddles, and this was a StarCraft 2 England cast. Bye for now.